3.1.3 mass change when a reactant or a product is a gas. So some reactions appear to have a change in mass when either a reactant or a product is a gas. So um, even though we said about the law of conservation of mass where no mass, um, the mass of reactants is equal to the mass of the products, in some reactions if the mass changes it's because a gas has either been gained or it's been lost. Three examples for you to consider. I don't know if you remember magnesium, but magnesium, when you put it in a Bunsen burner, burns with a, a bright flame. And you'll have done this as an experiment. You'll have taken a mass of magnesium and you'll have weighed the mass or recorded the mass um, and you'll put it in a little crucible with a lid on top and you'll have taken the lid off to let oxygen in and you'll have recorded the mass before and after it's been oxidized. Oxida oxidation is where a product gains oxygen. And you'll have seen that the mass has increased of the magnesium. And that's not breaking the law of conservation of mass. What the magnesium done is it's gained oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Another example, you might have taken something like calcium carbonate, which is a white powder, and heated it up. And it decomposes. Thermal decomposition of a metal carbonate. The mass goes down. My favourite thermal decomposition is copper carbonate because it starts off green, copper carbonate being green powder and when you heat it up it forms copper oxide which is black so you can see the colour change from green to black. Also if you take the mass of copper carbonate and compare it to the mass of copper oxide you'll realise the mass goes down. This doesn't break the law of conservation of mass. This happens when carbon dioxide has been given off and it produces a metal oxide is the other product formed in that reaction. So make sure you know those examples, make sure you can explain those examples um, because they do not break the law of conservation of mass. Um, what they do is they show that a, an, a product or reactant is a gas. So it's either been gained or the mass has been lost. Now anytime you do a chemical measurement, there's something called a level of uncertainty. You've been in a class where everyone's followed the same method and used the same equipment, but different people have got different results. The range of results which you've got in class, from the highest to the lowest is the range, that gives you an indication of the uncertainty of the procedure that you've followed. So if everyone's got close results, that's results that are close together, there's a low uncertainty in terms of the results. But if there's a big spread of results, it could be that one group wasn't concentrating or they used the wrong amounts, but it might just be down to the uncertainty of the experiment. So anytime you put something on a balance, what you're doing is you're getting the results, say, to two decimal places. Well, what about if there's a third decimal place? Your uncertainty is whether that is within 0 0.005 of the, the measurement that you're taking because it's been rounded up or possibly rounded down. The other thing that causes uh, obvious uncertainty in measurements is a measuring cylinder. When you measure a me measuring cylinder, you're probably doing it to the nearest centimetre cubed. Um, so that could have a plus or minus uncertainty of 0.5 centimetres cubed. The other one is a thermometer. So a thermometer, when you're reading it to say 0.1 of a degree, it's got a certain uncertainty of 0 0.05 plus or minus because it's either been rounded up or rounded down by the way you look at it. The other measure of uncertainty is the range around a mean point. That gives you an indication of the uncertainty. So we calculate the average or the average mean and then we consider the highest and lowest values compared to that mean. If there's a lot of results that are close to the mean, then you know you've got a low level of uncertainty. But if a lot of your results are spread far apart from the mean, then the uncertainty is quite high. Producing results with low uncertainty should be your aim as a scientist. That's when we do an experiment, you need to follow the method perfectly, as best you can, and also when you're taking measurements, do it as accurately as possible. The other thing you should do is use um, equipment that's the most precise. So don't take a beaker that's just got a line on the side that says 50 centimetres cubed. Use a measuring cylinder. Or even better, if you want a more accurate volume, you could use a burette or a pipette. 